Tim Pierce. This is another Floyd Rose Super Strat. This one has a speed plate that tapers down. So if you want to go deep, you go over here. If you want to use a speed plate, you come over here. It actually helps my alternate picking when I move over here. It's nice. And it's all, also, it's nice to have the familiar deep spot here to kind of dig in. It's good. And just like Floyd's uh, Lamborghini, it drives really fast. Click the link below for the online masterclass. There's a two week free trial. So you can check it out and see if it's right for you. What I want to talk about in this video is hand fatigue. The solo you just heard was pretty much wall to wall. I'm as guilty as every other guitar player of playing just constantly, never stopping. But one of the best ways to rest your hand, and my hands kind of get tired if I'm doing a lot of bending and doing a lot of vibrato. One of the best ways to rest your hand is just become a more tasteful player and play phrases and leave spaces. So you're, you're having more of a conversation, you're being more tasteful, but your hand is also resting. It's a double win. It's, it's a bonus. Let me try that again. And some of these things I'm doing where I'm squeezing and I'm pulling and I'm playing fast, the hand gets fatigued. The audience doesn't know that. You wouldn't know it if I didn't tell you, but it's actually more tasteful playing, I would argue. Here we go. <laughs> Now, another way to not fatigue your hands is when you play rhythm and lead together, when you're doing something by yourself, maybe there's not a band with you, think of yourself like Jimi Hendrix. Like if Hendrix was sitting on his bed in his bedroom or his hotel room, he'd do something like this maybe. So the point is I'm choosing two and three note clusters to kind of tell my story musically, and I'm not having to hold down all the chords. I mean, we all love amazing genius players like Tommy Emmanuel or Charlie Hunter. I don't know if you've heard him. Guys who can actually keep the entire guitar orchestra going with their hands the whole time. I was never one of those guys. I always wanted to be an ensemble player. So I like to let the bass player and drummer cover a lot of stuff so that I can be free to go. Or, or I can play these small clusters and the rest of the music is covered by others. We know classical guitar players. I have friends who can play these amazing classical pieces and it's like playing a piano. I was never that guy. And I, I don't think I was ever meant to be that guy. Who are you meant to be? Be yourself. <laughs> So one of the best things you can do to fight fatigue is also one of the best things you can do to be simply a good guitar player, and that is practice economy of motion. Included in economy of motion is not pressing down too hard with your left hand. I've heard it from lots of different great guitar players and teachers. You only need to apply enough pressure to, to create the fretted sound. I'm pressing twice as hard as I need to right now. I can lighten up. I still get the same sound. Now what happens when I do that, it actually makes it easier for me to switch between chords too. If I press down even softer, it gets easier to switch between these chords. So that's a double benefit. So don't press down too hard over here. Always check yourself. That's another argument for having one of these Ferraris in your hands. One of the reasons you don't see me with an acoustic guitar in my hands that much, although I've spent my life recording acoustic for people in the studio, is that I have to press down really hard on an acoustic. And I've always just preferred the electric because it's so much easier on my hands. It's that simple. You really do have to press down harder on acoustic, but the same theories apply. The people who are great at acoustic only apply the amount of pressure they need to make the sound and nothing more. And that keeps everything flowing 
and fights fatigue. Now, string gauge has an awful lot to do with how tired your hands get. And it depends on what kind of playing you're doing. I gravitate between nine through 42 and 10 through 46. For my hands, my small hands that aren't the strongest in the world, that works fine for me. This guitar has tens on it. There's a stability to tens. Uh, they stay in tune. Single note stuff sounds really good. When I put nines on one of my PRSs or an Anderson or that Floyd Rose guitar of mine, I can really fly and I can bring the tone back a lot of different ways. I can fatten up the sound with a, a boost pedal, just get tweak my amp just right and not hit too hard. And I can fatten up the tone even though the strings are quite a, not quite as fat sounding. So there are ways to bring that back. But the benefit is I can really fly. I can pull strings. I have more stamina with nines. If you're playing lead, and it hurts to bend a string, then switch to the nines. Put down the guitar with the tens and switch to the nines. Now, in the world of big rock bands and big rock artist guitar players, lots of guys have spent their entire careers tuned down a half step. There are benefits to this. Stevie Ray Vaughan and Hendrix among them. The strings are more slinky, so you can kind of, you know, the vibrato gets wide and easy. Uh, although in Stevie Ray Vaughan's cases, he was a super, superman with his hands. I mean, it was like a kind of strength that I don't, I don't even know how he did it. Same with Hendrix. But Hendrix had huge hands. I mean, his fingers were twice as long as mine. You look at him, he, he, they dwarf the neck of the Stratocaster. Anyway, lots of guys have played electric guitar their entire careers tuned down a half step. It also makes it easier for them to sing, too. That's another part of it. But occasionally people will ask me on acoustic guitar to do a solo and they'll say, hey, Make it sound like Clapton. Okay, so Clapton, when he solos, there's vibrato. And even on an acoustic, you'll hear Clapton bend a string. And it's really hard. You know what I do? I tune down a whole step. So if I'm playing, I'm working with somebody, and they want me to play a Clapton style solo on acoustic guitar, we're in the key of A, I'll go, okay, I'll do it, and I do this. I just move up a whole step, I'm playing in B. I can do it. So that's just, just a trick. Nobody ever knows. It sounds great. And my fingers can do it. <laughs> I do, of course I tune all the strings. Now there is a value to a guitar that's hard to play. I've talked about this in my videos. This old Epiphone is hard to play, but it turns me into a different animal. And that's a good thing if I'm trying to go to a certain style. What I'm talking about is when you want to be at your your optimum level of playing. When you stretch your limits up to the top of what you can do, it's better to have one of these Ferraris or Lamborghinis. But it just depends on how many guitars you want to own. If the guitar in your hand is fighting you, maybe it turns you into an animal that you want to be once in a while. You know, if you want to be this guy. <laughs> A benefit to that, to playing simply and fighting a guitar and extracting a tone out of a guitar that's not that easy to play. I bought this Les Paul in the 90s. I got a good deal on it, sort of paid dealer cost for it, which was quite a bit actually. It has one of those tops that they consider, you know, kind of the holy grail top. It's a really great Les Paul. It sounds great. It's kind of hard to play. The frets are, are they're kind of small and they're not that high. So when I pull strings, even with nines, my hand gets fatigued right away. Now vintage guitars are great and they have a lot of character. So if you're doing like simple, stuff like that, then you can wail on them. But if I want, really want to fly and play leads and do something really demanding, the guitar has to be really, really kind of like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, one of these high technology new guitars for me. I did lots of records with this, particularly Shine Down. There was a period where Shine Down didn't have a guitar player and I was doing recording, you know, secretly for Shine Down. And I used this guitar for a lot of solos, but they were very simple solos. It was more like And 
And they were short solos too, so my hand got fatigued, but you didn't know it because I was able to power through. And that's what I do with this guitar. I power through. It's not the best thing. You should be able to sail through, <laughs> flow through. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. If you are a subscriber, please ring the bell. It lets us let you know every time a new video is released. You can also support us by clicking the link below for the online masterclass. As I always say, we're up to over 100 hours of lessons and content, over a 1,000 videos, and we add more every month. There's a 14-day free trial. Take your time, take a long look. We'd love to have you join us.